preparing the mold for rock castings. I'm using a Woodland Scenics mold, or actually two of them. Firstly, you spray it with some wet water, that is water with a bit of dishwashing liquid or detergent in it. And it doesn't have to be soaking wet, just uh, nice and damp. And here's the second one. So being sprayed. And then we place that on a nice level area. I have leveled out that specific area on my workbench. And the next step is to mix the plastic. I am using a chicken liver tub, which is disposable, to mix the plaster. I have added one and a half measures of water and three measures of plaster of Paris. So that gives me a two to one ratio, two plaster and one water. Mix it until there is no more lumps visible. It should be a nice uh, liquid, almost like a cake batter. I'm using an old credit card that I cut up to give me a, a nice uh, spatula shape or a flat area to mix the plaster with. Keep mixing till there's very little air bubbles. You can see the air bubbles tend to rise to the surface. Also make sure to scrape the corners that there's no plaster sticking in the corners. And now let's begin pouring. And the second mold. See if we can scrape all the plaster out of the container. And sometimes it is good to give the, the mold a tap on the side just to have the, the plaster sink in and fill all the crevices. See if we can do that with this one. Okay, then we leave them to dry. Releasing the casting from the rock mold, that is quite simple. You gently peel the silicone rubber casting around the edges all the way, and then the casting will just pop out or should just pop out, like this one is doing there's a bit sticking but there we are a beautiful rock casting let's try the other one whoops that went a bit quick but there is the other casting and now comes the fun part and that is painting them I will demonstrate two different techniques one with acrylics and one with oil paint. Now I have all the supplies, a little mixing palette, water and the different paints starting with white, dark brown and I think this one is a golden brown and this one is umber and the red oxide and a burnt sienna or so this is a raw sienna and black. What we will do first is to give the rock a wash of a brownish tint and then we will darken it. It's easier to darken than it is to lighten it. Some raw sienna in the palette and I'm just going to spray it so I can get my spray bottle to cooperate, wet it so I can, and also important lightly mist the rock 
that uh, paint does not get absorbed into the plaster very quickly. Take a paintbrush, mix the paint and you can see it forms like almost a yellowish hue and we just spread it all over the rock. And at this stage it looks ghastly. There's no rock in real life is this yellow but as in all the most of the scenery techniques there's layering. And also to lighten it a bit, you can dab it with a kitchen towel. That will help soak up where the, the paint has actually stood on the surface. Next step is to add some dark brown. Just taking straight from the cap undiluted. And we're just going to run that over the rock. And I know again it looks ghastly, so we give it a spray of water and work it in with the brush. Again we can use the paper towel to soak up the excess water. And it's soaking up quite a bit of the paint too. So we can just spread it again with the brush. And after two coats, that is actually starting to look quite respectable, except for that area, which will peel off. And then there's still two steps. You can either skip one of them or apply both of them. Since uh, sunlight makes the rock stand out a bit, we can highlight the high-lying areas. Or we can low light the low lying areas and I'll show you how to do both. Now we're going to apply a thin wash of black that will creep into the crevices. I'm just going to turn it so that you have a better view. I have taken some acrylic black and I have mixed it with water to a very 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 thin consistency. And you simply just run it across all the rock and you'll see it finds it way, its way into all the, the low-lying areas. And if there's certain areas, ah, there's going to be a shady area, you can add a bit more. And again, the old paper towel to soak up a bit of the excess. And if we now turn it up, I'm still not satisfied. That's still a bit, uh, but it was also has not dried perfectly yet. It's still not 100% what I'm looking for. So I'm going to add a bit of yellow and red highlights because sometimes you find some of the rock look like it's a bit rusted. 
and then also where the sun hits it we're going to do it with a bit of dry brushing of white so I'm going to use some red oxide just wet my brush very very gently and again try and get a lot of it off and just touch up a little bit here and there and for this I'm going to actually use a technique of sponging with a sponge just spread the paint around a bit bottom and perhaps on this side and let's see if we bring this closer to the camera I think that looks a, a bit more realistic but we still have not highlighted. We're going to add some white with a dry brushing technique. Let's just clean the brush. A very stiff brush works very well for this. I'm just still using this brush that I used for the red, which is reasonably stiff. But now we need the paper towel again, this time, as the name dry brushing uh, suggests. We're going to take most of the paint off the brush, going to dip it in the white and take it off and then ever so slightly run it across that almost looks a bit much so we employ the sponge again and that will be an area where the sunlight hits it employ the sponge again and there will also be an area where the sunlight will hit it as will be that area and along that ridge well there is a quick demo uh, with the acrylic paints Just a video showing the rock casting, which is about uh, almost two meters long on my layout. The mirror at the back there on top shows the hidden staging yard behind the rock castings. We'll pause here and move the bridge crossing the river and then we're panning back to where we previously left off. The flat area up top is actually where the train is running the tracks are running from the bridge and that mirror is showing the hidden staging yard at the back so that you can see the fouling point markers which are the white sleepers or ties and the red arrow in the rock casting is oh, the red arrow the red push button is to turn over the turnout leading into the mine so I can elevate the camera slightly you can see there is a turnout which leads to the mine complex 
and on the opposite side there is also a turnout leading into the power station siding. <laughs> 